college football will welcome a brand new Division I program this season with the University of West Georgia transitioning from the Division II level to the FCS level, joining the United Athletic Conference. West Georgia found a lot of success at the Division III level, winning a national championship, and found some success at the Division II level, but will they be able to translate that to the FCS level? Stay tuned to find out. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college and spring league football content like this, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Also, let me know what college football program you are most excited to watch over the next few seasons in the comments section below. The University of West Georgia opened in 1906 and is located in Carleton, Georgia, which is west of Atlanta and near the Alabama-Georgia border. The football team began in 1946 when the school was a community college and known as West Georgia College, holding their first practice on September 30th, fielding a roster of 54 players. First season would not go well, as they would finish 2-5-1, would rebound the following year when they won the 1948 Tobacco Bowl. Heading into the 1958 season, the school became a four-year university, and that would be the last time they would field a football team for over two decades. The reason they got rid of the football team was due to a combination of financial constraints and a declining interest in sports by students at the time. As the school moved to a four-year status, they had to change up their spending habits to provide students with enough resources overall and field a strong university staff. What made this so disappointing was the fact that the university had a lot of freshmen and sophomores on the football team at the time so they could have developed into a special program. They had also only won 13 games in 14 years, and the program was viewed as a complete and utter failure. 22 years later, though, they would decide to bring back football, announcing the decision in May of 1980 and beginning to play in 1981. One of the primary reasons they brought back the team was a renewed interest and support for collegiate football both within the institution and among the community. Additionally, the administration likely saw football as a valuable tool for enhancing school spirit, fostering alumni engagement, and attracting students to the university. Financial considerations also likely played a role. With improved funding sources, increased student enrollment, and potentially lucrative opportunities for revenue generation through ticket sales, sponsorships, and merchandise, it seemed like a no-brainer as college football grew its popularity. Research was done by President Maurice Towson. Faculty members and students were heavily involved when it came to making the decision. Bobby Pate would be hired to be the school's first head coach. The team would play at the Division III level. Pate was a former collegiate running back at South Georgia State College under Bobby Bowden, that Presbyterian, and grew up in the state of Georgia. He began his coaching career serving as a coach for multiple Georgia high schools, putting together a 72-13-2 record or becoming an assistant at West Carolina in 1974. When Pate took the job, many thought he was crazy and would not be able to find success, which would destroy his reputation. When the team returned, they would have 385 players come out to try out, cutting the roster down to 115 for the school's first year. Some players who tried out for the team had never even played high school football, but saw an opportunity to play at West Georgia. The roster consisted of only players from the state of Georgia when all was said and done, a much different outcome compared to when they started their program in 1946. In their first season back, West Georgia found themselves ranked in the Division III polls and undefeated halfway through October. They would win their first game of the season 37-14 over Miles College, and the team started off 5-0. Pate told the Associated Press in October of 1981, This turned out far better than I envisioned. I could see the great potential here, but I didn't know it would come this fast, this soon. If I went back, everything we did, I don't think I'd change anything. It has gotten us publicity we never thought we'd be able to obtain. It's turned out well, so well that Georgia Southern and Valdosta State are going to follow suit and have football next year. The school saw a spike when it came to their enrollment, but as the season went on, pressure began to build. Heading into the season, many expected West Georgia to win only one game, and they would surpass those expectations instantly. Already there was talk done and research beginning on the possibility of moving to the Division II level, where they could start offering scholarships to players. West Georgia would finish the regular season 9-0, but lose in the Division III playoff quarterfinals, losing to Widener 10-3, although West Georgia forced seven turnovers in front of a crowd of 8,000 fans in Carleton. Widener would go on to win the national title that year. Four games into their second season, West Georgia had tied as many wins as they had had in program history as a JUCO when they started off the regular season 4-0 and 
proceeded to finish the year undefeated and won the Division Three national title, beating Augustana 14-0, who would proceed to win the next two Division Three national titles. Sitting with a record of 21-1, the school decided to move to the Division II level for the 1983 season and join the Gulf South Conference. The other reason for the move was because they already played at the Division II level for other sports, and the NCAA was in the process of making a rule that you had to play all your sports at the same level. They also were struggling to schedule opponents as no one wanted to play them down in the South. Many felt confident the program could find success at the Division II level since they were turning 114 of their 117 players who were on the national title winning squad. Heading into the season, Pate knew this would not be a cakewalk they experienced at the Division III level where they blew out a majority of competition. West Georgia would finish their season at the Division III level 4-6 and six, and 1-5 and in conference and finish the 1984 season 3-8 and eight and 1-7 and in conference. In January of 1985, Bobby Pate would resign as head coach to become the athletic director and football coach at Hart County High School, finishing his career with a 28-15 record. Pate told the media, It was such an attractive offer that common sense told me it was something I just had to do. College recruiting in the college game had worn him down over the years, and he had started his career at Hart County. From 1985 to 1992, the West Georgia football team would be bad to mediocre depending on the season, going 31-55, and with their best season coming in 1991 when they went 6-5, and and their worst season coming that year before when they went 1-10. Charlie Fisher would help rebuild the program back to their early glory days when he arrived in 1993 with his only losing season coming that year when they went 4-6. and Fisher helped them make it to the 1995 and 1996 Division II playoffs for the first time in school history and helped them win a share of their first Gulf South Conference title in 1997 when they went 8-2. He finished his West Georgia coaching career with a 36-17 record and left to take the wide receiver's coaching job at NC State. Glenn Spencer would be hired to replace Fisher after serving as West Georgia's linebacker coach from 1990 to 1996 and served as the team's defensive coordinator in 1997. Spencer would lead the Braves to two 10-win seasons, a share of two conference titles, and two Division II playoff appearances finishing with the 28-7 overall record in three seasons at the helm. After the 2000 season, Spencer would become the Georgia Tech running back coach. A fun fact is, Will Muschamp was actually an assistant on his 1998 staff. After an 8-3 season in 2001, West Georgia returned to struggling, going 18-45 between 2002 and 2007, with their lone winning season during that time period coming in 2005 when they went 7-4. Head coach Daryl Dickey would try to right the ship when he took over as head coach in 2008, but things would get worse before they would get better. Dickey would go 4-26 during his first three seasons, but would lead them back to their first winning seasons in 2011 when they went 6-4 and four, and Dickey would be named Gulf South Coach of the Year. Dickey would become the school's athletic director in 2013, finishing with a 19-42 record as head coach. Will Hall would replace Dickey as head coach and would right the ship almost immediately, showing the groundwork Dickey had done towards the end of his tenure. Hall would lead West Georgia to their first win in the Division II playoffs, taking them to back-to-back semifinal appearances with a 12-3 and 12-2 and and record and a share of the 2015 Gulf South title. He would finish three seasons at West Georgia with a 31-9 and record and left to take the Louisiana offensive coordinator position following a 7-4 and season. Replacing Hall would be Valdosta State coaching legend, rival of West Georgia, mind you, David Dean, who won two Division II national titles as the Blazers' head coach. Dean would lead West Georgia to six straight winning seasons finishing with multiple playoff appearances and a 48-20 record, finishing as the program's winningest head coach. In September of 2023, West Georgia announced that they would be moving up to the Division I FCS level as a member of the A-Sun, but now United Athletic Conference. West Georgia President Brendan Kelly told Sports Illustrated, this move to NCAA Division I marks a turning point for our university, amplifying the impact of collegiate athletics and our student-athletes and igniting a new era of spirited competition. Our student-athletes, coaches, and staff are thrilled to come together as a pack to achieve this transition and are eager to leave an incredible legacy for future generations of Wolves. West Georgia had considered making the move a decade ago when their program was struggling and chose not to make the move then. The University of West Georgia's undergraduate enrollment had grown from 8,687 students in the fall of 2022, almost three times that the average of Division II schools averaging 3,899, 
and not far from the Division I average, 11,783. Finally, with the program on the right track again, the move seemed like a no-brainer. They are using North Alabama's move to the ASUN from the Gulf South back in 2018 as their roadmap. Their first future matchup with an FBS opponent will be when they take on Cincinnati at Nippert Stadium on September 4, 2027. Heading into the first season as an FCS team, they will be led by first-year head coach Joel Taylor. Taylor is originally from Brooklyn, New York, and began coaching at his alma mater, South Carolina State, after his playing career was over. He has also spent time with Lenora Ryan and the Citadel, most recently spending the last four seasons serving as Mercer's defense coordinator. The Mercer's defense went from one of the worst in the FCS in 2019 to the top third of the subdivision in Taylor's first season, and he helped lead Mercer to the FCS playoffs this past season. West Georgia should be fun to watch next year and will open up their season hosting Sanford for their first ever Division I matchup in school history. What do you think? Can West Georgia find success at the FCS level? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and as always, remember to embrace the grind.